Hello everyone! Today, Scorch Your Toys at AnyMoon.com is taking a look back at Toynami's Masterpiece Beta Toys, which were also repainted and offered by Aoshima as part of their Miracle House New Century Alloy line of toys. Toynami rolled their toys out beginning with the VFB9H in December 2008, then the Z in February and the I in September of the following year, all toys had an MSRP of $149.99 US dollars. You may have seen pictures of a shadow variant, but that never made it past the prototype stage. Aoshima dropped all three variants in August 2009 for 17,800 yen. If you're shopping for these toys today, you'll have to hit the secondary market. If you're shopping for more recent products, then click through my campaign link in the comments below to head to Big Bad Toy Store. You'll find a huge selection of Robotech, Transformers, and just about everything else made of plastic and help this channel out in the process. Toynami retained the book-style package for these toys, and it's honestly kind of dumb. Not many people have books this gargantuan, and the boxes don't work well at this size. They have a bad tendency of splitting at the seams. That said, they're still impressive boxes. They have nice flip-top lids and exude class. Aoshima opted for much more traditional packaging. The boxes are sturdy and each release gets unique packaging, but there's nothing about the packaging outside or in that feels special. Aoshima or Toynami, the contents are the same. You get the toy, there's a pilot figure which is reused from the Alpha or Legios toys, metal landing gear with spinning wheels and rubber tires, two connecting booms for attaching the Alpha or Legios toy, a plug to conceal the connecting boom attachment point, and a primitive display stand consisting of a base and an arm. There's also stickers and instructions in a separate baggie. The Aoshima toys come with black and white instructions generic for all treads, while the Toynami comes with color instructions specific to the release. You can find scans of all the instructions on anymoon.com. I also have a separate video that covers transformation and alpha connection that I encourage you to check out by clicking the little card now. No video review for a toy of this mech would be complete without a couple explanatory bits, so let's address them. First, manufacturers have gravitated toward the name of tread over Taled. Probably because it's just easier to pronounce. People have bag solved acronyms for the tread name, but T-L-E-A-D was the original and now seems to have fallen out of usage. Next, we need to take a detour to discuss scale. Mospita is notoriously non-compliant with published sizes of vehicles. Official line art depicts the vehicles at different relative sizes to each other and their pilots frequently, and those variances are even more dramatic in the animation. Lance and CMs follow the official Mospita height of 10 and a half meters tall. The folks over at Robotech favored a larger official size for the beta, so the Toynami Masterpiece and Aoshima Tread are built off of the Robotech reversed engineered dimension of 13.7 meters tall. So, even though the size of these toys seemed to be all over the map, all manufacturers got pretty close to the scale they were shooting for. You would expect the Toynami to be heavier given its bigger size, but what you might not expect is for the Toynami to be more than three times heavier. While the CM's toy has nearly no metal, unless you attach the metal connecting cradle, the Toynami has metal lower legs that add significant heft. You've probably already noticed at this point, the Aoshima toy and the Toynami toys, although basically the same, do have a little bit different color to them. And that's obviously so they can match their corresponding Alpha or Legios toys. So brighter green on the Aoshima. The reds are almost identical. The blue is again brighter on the Aoshima. The green and red toys also have gray trim on the Toynami and Aoshima left it white. So that was just something Toynami did. They liked the look of it. Aoshima went with the more traditional white look that matches the blue tread. So that's what they did. There's also the heads on these toys. The Aoshima green toy has a slightly different shape to the head. So there you can see it. Now I'll bring forward this guy here and you can see slightly different, a little more squared off, a little less of a lip in the front. So something interesting there, but the red toys and the blue toys have the exact same head to them. Unlike CM's, Toynami did give each variant its own special head, just like the Legios. 
This one has a fin on the back and a little sensor up in the front. And again, the Aoshima and Toinami exactly the same on the red toys. Here's the more traditional blue head. Not a whole lot going on to it. Just the simple design that you know and love. The cockpit droops down in the front. This is just something that we have to deal with. Toinami could not figure out a way to hide that better. You know, all they really had to do was figure out a way that you could spin it. But Toinami basically said that they were at a point where if this thing were any more expensive, they wouldn't be able to justify making it. So they kept it simple. And that was their solution. Now underneath the chest, there are a couple little tabs that we can slide back. And that recesses this button here. So you can just push the button if you prefer. With those back, we can then pull down the missile bays and reveal those interior missiles. And you can see they've got a white circle with a red top. They look decent. This fat black patch here, a little less decent, but overall not bad. The bummer though, is that there are no shoulder mounted missiles. There's nothing to pop up here like there are on the CM's products. And while the Toynami Beta is a far superior toy to the Alpha, it's not without its own build quality issues. Now I can handle this toy a lot more freely than I do my MPC Alphas, but I do have things like paint smear. There's a couple spots of glue that aren't in the perfect spot. So build quality very much improved, but you can still find an issue here or there. So the toy's big, it's heavy, it's well built, but is it fun to handle? The answer to that is, yeah, kinda. You can definitely get some poses that look pretty intimidating, and if that's what you're going for, some good shelf factor, you are definitely gonna achieve that. In handling it, it has some minor issues that seem like they could have been easily resolved, which makes them a little more frustrating. The hips don't really lock in position very well. They have an exterior position for bomber mode, an interior position for soldier mode, but while you're handling it, you can knock them free pretty easily. Uh, the bigger issue when you're handling the toy is this section back here. There should be a peg here and a slot here. And if there were, that would lock this upper body together. But since there isn't, if I knock this back, the whole upper section will fall over on me. So that can be pretty frustrating while you're holding the toy. But now if you want to get this thing into a nice pose, you certainly have some options there. The head's not a ball joint, but it does spin around. The shoulders. Nice clicky shoulders. Even moving the arm out from the shoulder has nice solid detents to it. And you could spin the shoulder around to open the cavity so you could bring the arm upward, which is also pretty cool. Then if we move down the arm, there's a spinning point just above the elbow and the elbow allows 90 degrees of articulation, which we'd like to see a little bit more, but it is what it is. The hands spin around. Would have been nice if a little forethought went into the hands too and they made them so that they could hold the gun for the alpha now on the cm's toy the gun looks a little bit more appropriately sized in the hands of the tread but the cm's toy can pull it off and it looks good and adds to the fun factor the other thing that the cm's toy has is it has another joint within the arm so you can bring the forearm out and away so a couple pluses for cm's that toynami does not keep up with but again toynami looks good moving down to the hips You've seen them splayed out. We could bring them in, but you can't rock the toes outward or inward very much. Not very much mobility in that direction. Instead, we have nice, super loud ratchets, which is great because this is a very, very heavy leg on here. And so it needs it. Unfortunately, you can hear my other leg, no ratcheting going on. So out of the six treads I currently own are betas. Uh, only four of them have completely functional ratchets in the hips. So that's a bit of a bummer, but it hasn't really stopped me from enjoying this toy. So I'm not gonna harp on it too bad. As we move down to the knee, you only get that much range of motion. Now you can extend the knee, which is a little bit of a godsend, uh, but you just get one more click out of it. So it would have been nice if there was a pivot point up here that would allow you to rock that whole thing further back. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Going down to the toes, we have this toe here articulated. The back toes, not so much. They seem to wiggle a little bit. Uh, I don't know if the plan was to make them more articulated. You can see there's a rod in between, uh, but you're not gonna really do anything. There you go. 
That's my range of motion. So you can't really do anything with those. But like I said, you can get this toy in some really good poses. It'll look great on the shelf, but it won't do every single thing that you can imagine. Again, check out my separate transformation guide. But here we are in what the Toynami toys call guardian mode, what you might just think of as a VTOL mode. We have a gap here. This is where this cavity filler comes in handy. So we can just take this and plug that in. That's where the bar is going to go later for connection. The toy has an absolutely massive wingspan of 43 centimeters. That's almost 17 inches long. We can continue in this mode and in bomber mode to use the missiles that are inside the chest there. And again, we just have to pull forward these things to lock those compartments in their position. Now, one of the downsides we can see already is that there is a gap behind the cockpit. And you can see that gap from certain angles, which is not great. And what's worse is if you bump the cockpit, it very easily gets askew. You'll also notice some smudges on the lenses and that the lenses aren't transparent. So that's a little bit of a bummer. The smudges are, called when, are caused when you connect an alpha toy and you'll see that in a little bit. The other thing we could check out while we're here is the cockpit, which is definitely done much better than it was on the CM's toy where they just kind of pinned a pilot permanently in a very awkward position inside. So there is the cockpit, there is the seat. If we had a Toynami toy, here we have the green masterpiece toy. If we open up the cockpit here and bring the chair forward, you expose that sequence number. So that's where that is on the Toynami toy. Now we also have a pilot figure that is exactly the same as it was with the Legios toy. And you can see there's that hole in the seat. It is a very, very, very tight fit. So I'll see if I can pull this off on camera. But the feet are just very big, squeezing into a narrow spot. It works, but it takes a lot of patience. And it might work better if I isolated the chair a little bit. Let's try that. So we squeeze them in. There it goes. And then I got to get the hole in. And if you don't get this all just situated perfectly, then it won't close up right and you'll end up with a gap in the front. So that's how you do it. I'll try to settle him in a little bit better. But that gap in the front is also a problem. Even if I pinch this thing tight, you get a little bit of a gap up front, which is not ideal. If you're not using the landing gear and just swooshing the toy around the room, this is what it's going to look like to you. Now, a couple things. Again, the damage on that lens. And you know what's frustrating is that lens is a separate piece of plastic that looks like it's just glued in. So even more reason why it should have been transparent in the first place with the paint on the inside of that lens, which is a bit of a bummer. Handling the toy otherwise fairly solid. There are a few things that kind of pop loose on you. Uh, the arms, and if you're not careful when you're handling this, you can pop in the legs, which then can disconnect this back section here. From a line art perspective, the toy does decently, but not incredibly well. There's a huge gap on either side of these weapons that should just not exist. The feet uh, are a little peculiar. You got this booster that comes out, this really big fat toe that hangs off the back end. Doesn't really resemble the line art too closely. The underarms are big, fat, not really doing anything to conceal this shoulder down to the bicep and even into like the forearm wrist area. This area is all supposed to be concealed. The shoulder should have a little nub sticking out, but really what should happen, if you look in, this is a big empty cavity right now. So this whole piece should condense down a little bit, but Toynami again was keeping things simple. They didn't go that route. And we've already talked about the gap there that you could see. You can argue things are a little thick or thin in a couple places, but really those are the big things that jump out to me. Also, the very large cockpit, which is good because it fits the pilot, but it's a little on the large side. And again, it comes out pretty far because they didn't recess it back at all. And you get that gap in the front that we've already mentioned. So those are the downsides, but you can pick it up. You can squeeze it around. It is very heavy. It is very large. It feels very impressive and it's a good enough likeness of the tread or beta fighter that you certainly could display it on its own 
like this. This toy is heavy, so you might be done flying it around sooner than later. And when you're ready to, you could park it on its occluded landing gear. So what you do is you open up these bays in the back, and that reveals the slot. And then you grab from your parts bin, a little metal landing gear, and you just plug those right into position. And then you're gonna grab your front connecting boom and attach the landing gear to the bottom of that and just slide it in that opening. So you're not gonna have that cover on there right now. And there you go. Now you've got the toy sitting on its landing gear. One thing you do have to be conscious of when you do this though, is that this boom doesn't lock into position. So while I can slide it back pretty easily, if I pull forward, the boom is just gonna come out. So I should push the toy somewhere else. Uh, one little QC issue to mention while we're looking at this particular toy is that it's got a pretty weak connection up at the cockpit it tends to want to slope, slope down on me. So that can be an irritating issue, but I'm sure there's ways to tighten it up with either a little Elmer's glue or a piece of clear tape somewhere. Speaking of clear tape, we're now about to connect the fighter mode Alpha or Legios toy to the Beta or Tread. And so you could put a little clear tape on top of these yellow places that I've shown you get scraped up, and that will protect it for the next mode. So here we are combined Alpha, Beta, Legios, Tread in fighter bomber mode. And I gotta say, I think it's kind of a thing of glory. It looks big and bulky and like it would be a good killing machine. So kudos to the combined thing. The scales, if you disagree with them or not, I think this looks pretty impressive. And you can pick it up as I have you can hold it by the bottom of the tread or that uh, extension, the connecting boom, and you can fly it around your house, which is pretty cool. Now again, that boom is not connected, so I have to have a finger in on it or else my alpha would fly right off right now. But all in all, this thing handles well. It is where it's supposed to be as far as the alpha is concerned. There's a little slope upward that looks like it could have been resolved somehow, but I'm not going to begrudge it too much because I think it looks pretty good and it handles better than any other connected Alpha Legios Beta Tread that has been produced so far. One benefit of the Alshima Legios toy is that it does have that missile pod there and when you connect it to a tread that missile pod kind of blocks up the visual impact of the air dam the tread would be. So that's cool. If you happen to own three of the Legios toys you could do some sort of crazy, super loaded up Legios like I have here. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't put the gun up on top here. It looks a little bit silly, but also kind of fun in my estimation. You're probably just going to have one gun attached to the toy. And you can see this display stand a little wiggly, but it's holding up everything just fine, which is pretty impressive given how heavy this combined toy is. It comes over towards the back of the tread, holds that up, and it holds the connecting arm as well. So everything is locked into position now. The good thing about this toy is that when it's connected in fighter mode, you don't have to flare the legs out. And when I say this toy, I mean both the Toy Nami and the Aoshima. You don't have to flare the legs out so much that it interferes, interferes with the attached gun. Now that's not always the case on the CM's toy where you kind of have to flare the legs so far out and then angle them down to get the gun on, it's kind of a disaster. So Toinami Aoshima did a much better job in that respect. And I gotta say, I find this just to be a very impressive display piece when combined in fighter mode. With a soldier mode Legios connected to the tread, the Aoshima toy or the Toinami masterpiece toys, again, easily outshine the CMs the display stand is fairly basic. It can't pivot in any direction. If it could, the weight of this thing would probably just make everything collapse. But it keeps the Legios elevated, which is not something the CM's toy does. And that frees you up for a lot more posing of the actual soldier, soldier mode Legios. Now on the downside, the bottom of the Legios, where it connects to the connecting rod here, has no way of actually latching into position. So this toy can move about. And if I try to do something like bring both legs forward into some sort of a pose where it looks like it's backing off, the weight of the legs will cause the toy to fall forward and potentially even fall off the stand. So that's not ideal. You're always gonna have to bring one leg back and you can see I've kind of popped out of my cradle there. 
and get the toy into a position like so. But this is still a lot more dynamic than what you can do with the CM's toy. Now the hands on the Toynami Alphas are incredibly brittle. I don't really recommend you handling them at all in either diver or uh, soldier batloid. I should be using Robotech terms here, batloid or guardian modes. Those hands on the Toynami toys just fall apart. The Aoshima toys, much sturdier hands. So that's the benefit of going that route. So if you have the Toynami beta and you want a Legios, or I'm sorry, an alpha toy in batloid mode to go along with it, the super poseable is a good color match and a good match in general. So that is a good option for you. You can find a lot cheaper than you can a Masterpiece Alpha. And if this were the pose you were going for, you can do more with, with this toy. It's super poseable. It doesn't stay on quite as well as a Masterpiece toy, but it's got enough heft to it to keep the thing on there. And you can have a lot of fun, come up with some good displays in this configuration. This is far from a perfect beta or tread toy, and on an individual basis, I can't say it's better than a CM's toy, though it certainly has a completely different look and feel. When we consider how this toy connects to an Alpha or Legios, it's leaps and bounds better than the dreadful CM's piece, which is really sad since CM's designed their toys simultaneously, and Toynami's beta is an add-on to a toy that no one ever thought would have an add-on. So if you're looking for a beta to attach to your Alpha in fighter mode, there is no question that this is the toy to get. Yet. Unfortunately, the Toynami Alpha and Aoshima Legios toys are best avoided, which creates a real dilemma when grabbing this toy, since most people will only view it as an accessory to the Alpha. So if you already own a Toynami Alpha or an Aoshima Legios, and you really like Mespita, then I think you should add a beta or tread to your shelf. If you think the Alpha Beta look amazing paired up in fighter mode and don't think you'd ever transform your Alpha or Legios, then the whole set may be worth tracking down. If you're not a diehard Mospita fan and not in love with the look of these toys, then you can get more enjoyment from cheaper, more available products. If you enjoyed this video or felt you learned something from it, hit that thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Check out the full article on anymoon.com. And as always, thanks for watching.